for attending. We're going to give a two-minute warning. Two minutes, we're going to get going. This is GPI Learn Plus, a blended learning program that delivers results. All right, people joining at the last minute, but we're getting started here. It's 2 o'clock, and hello, everyone, and welcome to GP Strategies webinar, GPI Learn Plus, a blended learning program that delivers results. My name is Eric Naus, and I will be your host for today's event. Thank you all for attending, and before we get started, I want to announce that we will be hosting a GPI Learn Plus Users Conference March 7th through 9, 2017 in New Orleans. This is a great opportunity to receive product training, see presentations from industry peers on how GPI and Plus has been applied throughout their organization, and the chance to collaborate with those helping to create the content and execute the features GPI Learn Plus has to offer. Look for a save the date communication this week. Before we get started, I want to go over a few housekeeping items. First, everyone's phone lines has been placed on listen-only mode to eliminate disruption. If you have a question during the presentation, we ask that you submit it through the Q&A module found on the right-hand side of WebEx, and we'll address them at the end of the session. Uh, secondly, the slides and recording of this event will be emailed to within a week, I'm thinking sometime uh, midweek next week. Now I, need to, now I want to introduce you to our presenter, Sherry Webble. Sherry is the Director of Training and E-Learning Development at GP Strategies and has over 16 years experience designing, developing, and delivering interactive computer-based and web-based learning modules. Her goal is to drive ISD techniques and provide valuable input on the state of learning and best-in-class practices. She recently received her Master's of Science in Learning Sciences and Technology with a focus in aiming for instruction at Lehigh University. She has also earned her Master's of Science in Instructional Design and Development from Lehigh, and she has a Bachelor's of Science in Art Education from Cutstown University. With me, I'd like to turn the session over to you. Thanks, much, Eric, and thanks, everyone, for joining us. By the way, that was me. Um, let's right in. So what we want to talk about today with GPI Learn Plus, it's my absolute pleasure to talk about GPI Learn Plus. Some of you may be familiar or maybe current users of GP Learn. Uh, really, just to give you a little bit of history, I started in my role with GPI Learn about nine months ago. A, a look at the product and decided that we needed to make some changes. Um, we needed to listen to the feedback from our customers, really needed to enhance the product and focus on the end user. So what you're going to hear today are about those enhancements that we've already made, uh, about the future roadmap for the product, really about how we've listened to you, and we've really taken a lot of feedback to turn it into a product that's very user-focused. So I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction in case you're not familiar with GPI Learn. I'm going to give you a, a little a deeper dive into the, dem the uh, benefits, and then we're going to jump right into a demonstration. So it was a little bit of an introduction around GPI Learn Plus. GPI Learn has been around since 2002. We currently do have 46,000 users who are using either our GPI Learn or our content server option. That's 265 power companies in 40 different countries. That's not only the learning management system, which is really going to be the focus of our conversation today, but it also includes all of the content that comes with it. So that's 3,200 lessons and exams. GPI Learn Plus can be used 
goes to really follow the life cycle of an employee in your organization. So a lot of the new features that we've added, you can use GPIM Plus from a hiring perspective. So if you're looking to do screening exams, hiring tests, other things that you might want to do um, as a part of onboarding or as a part of the hiring process, you can do a lot of those inside of GPIM Learn and then be able to monitor and look at all the metrics, um, the results. You can find initial qualifications. So I know that that's very important in the energy industry. We need to think about knowledge tests, skills tests. We need to think about other things like structured OJT that we might be doing in a paper-based format. And you can actually do that in an online format using GPIM Plus. That is a great qualification and includes leadership training as well. So really you can see across the bottom, it's taking you from new hire all the way through to management. This is a sampling of some of the courses that are a part of GPLM Plus. Just last year, we actually refreshed all of the courses so that they're in a consistent look and feel. We have a few other things up our sleeves this year. We're actually taking the flash out of all of the courses to make sure that they're mobile friendly. But we've got some other things in store for you as well, and that'll be coming in some emails. So when you see those emails come out from us, maybe that you open them up because there's some really cool stuff coming your way in the next couple of months. This is an example of what the content does look now, so we do have that glossary on the right-hand side. Everything is completely consistent, so no matter what course you launch, you're going to get the same look and feel, um, same level of consistency. It's really going to help make things a lot easier for the learners because, again, that is who we are focusing on. Think about GPI Learn Plus. This is really one of the, the value adds that GPI Learn Plus can have or kind of one of those differentiators. So looking at a a typical management system, you have to go through all of the upfront setup to get that learning management system in place. You have to go through, you know, setting up the servers, provisioning things, getting all of the sites set up, We've actually taking that as a company as a capital expense. We set up the servers for you. We've set up that GP master site. We've done all of the upgrading that we need to do to prepare for GP Island Plus. The site then will trickle all of that information down into your individual site. What it means to you is it means that you have a site that's leveraging all of the effort and the, I mean, all of the financial impacts of setting up a learning management system that we've done for you. You have all of that benefit directly to your site. Those sites are completely separate from one another, so your information is completely private. Um, no other organization has the ability to access that. Here example of then within your site, you then have as many sub-sites as you want. So if you have multiple plans, the plans all have different managers to them, maybe they have different learn paths to them, you have the ability to customize your individual sites as well. So really what we're trying to do is to make this easier on all of you as the requirements for compliance, uh, you know, the requirements for qualifications are, are increasing as the days go by. We want to make sure that we're here to support you in that. Now let's take a look at what some of those benefits are to you. So start with from a learner perspective, what are learners really going to see? So learners are really going to see some enhanced courseware, which we've already discussed. We're also giving them access to that entire catalog. So we don't need to select specific moves that your organization might be interested in. The entire catalog is at your disposal. There's a qualified certification process, which is a huge win. Um, certification now have the ability to repeat um, year after year in a very easy fashion. The other great piece, or my favorite piece about it, is that you can actually hide the certifications from view until it's time to take them again. I don't know any of you, but I've been in the learning management systems before where that certification sits on my learning plan all year long. I have one particular certification that I think I take about four times a year because I keep on thinking it's going to come due again. You have learner dashboards, which I'm going to get to in a minute. From an administration perspective, we have improved learning paths, so it's going to be really easy to set up these courses. You'll be able to drag and drop to build these learning paths together. Reporting has gotten a lot easier where you now have a calendar picker to set your report dates. You have the ability to schedule reports in advance using a wizard. And that includes even sending it to people who may not be on GPI Learn Plus. Um, so we'll actually send the emails directly to them with you on CC. 
ability to do group completions in a very easy sense, as well as creating those courses, again, is a matter of going through a wizard, using drag and drop, um, really makes things a lot easier from our administrators' perspective because a lot of our administrators may not be full-time admins. We need to make sure that we are providing them with the level of support so they can get done what they need to do in GPI Learn Plus and they can go back to doing their other job responsibilities. From the executive perspective, we have a lot of really cool executive uh, dashboards. Um, these dashboards can be completely custom for your organization. So if you're thinking about some of the things that you might do in Excel and some of the time that you might spend building charts in Excel. Data dashboards actually do all of that for you. Um, they're updated once an hour. We're, we're able to do um, currency management. So currency management can be done through GPI Learn Plus, integrating information from other sources. And overall gives you a lower total cost of ownership with all the time and the energy that you're saving. Now into the demonstration. If you hold a second and bear with me, let us share an application. So PIM Plus looks like now. What you see on your individual's page is what you're going to see on the next page. It's just a splash page for all of you. Gives you a lot of great information. You'd be able to access this at any time. Once you get on your site, this is what you're going to see. See, there's a nice clean look and feel. This picture right here would be a picture of your organization or your plant that can be customized by plant. This something right here can say whatever you need it to say. We want to feel like it's an extension of your organization and we want your users to have something like their home. You know, this is, this is a part of their organization. This is something that is important to their organization. So let me get my password real quick. going to do is it's going to log me into the administrator role. And the reason why I'm doing this is it's going to show you something that, that I think is one of the coolest features. It's not a, a huge change, but it can be a game changer for a lot of our admins. Go to this user summary tab and search for a particular user. You might have users who are struggling with a particular concept. They might um, be getting something on their screen that they don't quite understand. Um, and we might not have individuals who are really tech savvy, so they might need a little bit of extra support. In the world, we would have to actually ask for their password or reset their password, log in, see what they're looking at, then set their password, and you know, there's just a lot of administrivia that was involved in that. What I do now is I just click and choose this login button. That open up a new page, which I logged in as that user. So I can sit side by side with my learner or I can be on the phone with my learner and I can talk them through specifically what they need to do, seeing exactly what it is that they see. At this, this is the learner home page. The learner, this is what I'm going to see immediately upon logging in. There's really four things that I want us to cover today. In the upper right hand corner, we have that courses due box. What that's doing is it's letting the learners know exactly how many courses they have completed and how many courses are overdue. As we aging workforce ahead of us and we have a, an emerging group of who may be entering our workforce, we need to adjust to different learning styles. And one of the things that I've learned about the generation who's entering or may already enter the workforce, they need to own their learning. So the concept of assigning learning doesn't necessarily appeal to them really want to have a little bit more control than that. And so that's some of the features that we put into GPI Learn Plus. We want that they have the knowledge of what they need to complete, what's going to be important to them. And then really we want to help them grow in their career. So in our career, we're going to look at this job roles feature. Job roles don't have to be specific across your entire fleet. They can be specific to a site. They customize by each site, but really what it is, is it's, and you may have heard this before, it's the what's in for me. So if I'm and I go into my learning management system and I see a series of 50 courses that I might need to take, I let, and that becomes pretty daunting. I where I need to start, I don't know what courses are most important to me, and it's overwhelming. It groups all of the learning that the individuals need to do and groups it together by 
a specific topic as related to their job role. So it's going to be the most important part for me to focus on upon entering the system. Let's see is the licenses and qualifications. So they don't necessarily have anything to do with each other. They be responsible for within your organization or maybe requirements of your organization. But really what this is doing is it's providing a one-stop shop for information related to their job role. The learning ability to see what their current status is, see required statuses, even upload and add documents as needed. Net compliance and regulatory requirements. So these would be their yearly certifications. Again, these are all, right now, they're online courses. They could be any type of course that might be needed. You need to right away see whether something is current, whether it's expired, when it was last completed, what action needs to be taken. Again, it's providing them with a level of prioritization of what's important to their job role as well, where those licenses and qualifications are going to come first. The regulatory requirements are going to come second. And next, we have job-based training and tasks. So be anything else that might be helpful to them in the job world. The things that you do assign because they're required. They could be information that maybe is recommended. They could be things that are on GPLM Plus. They could be site-specific information. They could be a structured OJT checklist, which you can use our assessment tool to actually put online so that everything is really tracked in one place. Is it's providing all the information that they need all in one location. So exactly what they need to do with their in their careers to be able to grow and mature. Now, thing that you can consider is actually placing other job roles available for their review. So if they're in um, control operator one and have to move into control room operator two, be able to go into control room operator two and start taking some of those courses to enhance their knowledge. So it's a way of providing them with more information about how they can grow in their career without having all of that be put down from management. Going to, to that main home page, I'm going to show you the next really cool piece that we're able to show, to show you. So you have the ability to do a learning path. And what a learning path is, and if you're a GPI Learn user, you may be familiar with the concept of an integrated learning. What that is, is you think about what, as you walk down a road. Um, you have, there's learning paths, there's learning tracks. A track is a one-way one ticket. You're going to go down here, you're going to complete these courses in sequence, and that's what you're going to do to get to, from point A to point B. But it's really a recommendation of a general direction to go. So as we look at this learning path, what we're going to see is we're going to see a lot of different types of information. This one is going to include nine total courses but give them a little bit of structure to the courses that are available to them and the courses that are assigned to them. So it has the ability to do once they get into the learning path is they're able to see all of these courses direct from the learning path. They can access those courses. We have the ability to have some of those be assigned. Again, they can be um, instructor-led courses. They can be online courses. It's really up to you as to what you include as learning path. Ability to set different sections, so you can see right now we only have one section in here and all the courses are mandatory. But if you want to have multiple sections, you could have multiple sections. If you wanted to have sections that were prerequisites and maybe the other sections were locked, you have the ability to do that too. Again, what we're doing is we're providing them with a lot of great information on their progress. So I'll see my progress not just on the individual sections, but on the learning path overall. So a lot of context of what I need to focus, what I need to focus on, and giving me a little bit of that, why is this important to me, why I need to take these courses. Home, we're able to scroll down and then see, but that doesn't mean that everything has to be so structured. So we look at the my self-paced learning. This is giving all of the different other pieces of knowledge that I might want. These are things that maybe I, as a learner, enrolled in myself. These might be other things in which um, someone else assigned to me, we're going to get to that in a minute. But the other type of learning that might be available. Example of what the, the learner view looks like. If I toggle back here, and I look for policy manager. 
as I log in to as Paula's manager, I'm able to see what manager would, would view when they log into GPM Learn Plus. As I scroll down, I can see I have four direct reports on manager. Dotto is the person who we were just looking at. And see exactly where each of them stand from a completion standpoint. We have these great actions over here, which allows me as a manager to be able to do some elements in the system without having to contact my system administrator. So I know what their current learning is. I can look at their learning history. Learning history is really just a dynamic report that the learner has taken. I need to enroll them via a catalog, which is huge. So let's say I'm having a conversation with Paula, and Paula is having some challenges with three-way communication. One world they may have needed to do is they might have needed to talk to Paula and then talk to my systems administrator, maybe assign some courses on three-way communication. What I actually do now is right in that same conversation, I can sit down with her, have a conversation, and then the courses that I think would be helpful to her via catalog. I contact anyone else to be able to do that. I have the ability to do that for her. She can go back to her desk and she's able to log into those courses and the change is instantaneous. We also have the ability to do manager assessments. So if you think about structured OJT, if you think about um, some of those questionnaires or some of those um, competency management that we might do, that's exactly the way that you would do them is through a manager assessment. Now with me for one second. I'm actually going to go to another study to show you the dashboards that we have for systems administrators for our executives. So one of the dashboards that we have is around competency management. So competency management is a huge buzzword in the industry right now. It does seem to mean something a little bit different depending on your organization. So you may have to uh, use a little bit of creativity at this point to see how this would apply to you. Um, and we're absolutely happy to have a conversation with you to see how this would work well in your organization. If you look at competency management, let's say I'm monitoring competency management for an entire organization. If I chart on the left-hand side, that's going to tell me the competency management for my entire organization. So that's to me that across my entire fleet, I'm currently in the warning area. Yeah. If I'm a senior executive and I look at that, I'm going to go, okay, well, I need to do something about that. Do I have time to call each individual plant and, and see what's going on? Probably not. Is that probably the best use of my time? Probably not. What is I can slide one box over and I can start to look at competency status by location. So I need to see exactly where an organization sits, um, where a location sits on the competency framework and maybe helps me focus my energy a little bit more and get a little bit more direction of where my root cause might be. If I go over to the competency status by job role, that lets me know whether this is actually a challenge from a job role perspective. For example, I might have a challenge within a specific job role that may not actually be related to training at all. I need to, as I look at the example competencies that are here, I might look at technology, for example, and see that in job rule two, technology seems to be a particular pain point. That may be pointing me to the fact that I need to start looking at my high practices, that I need to ensure that the people I'm hiring have the appropriate level of technology expertise to be able to, to do their job well. Actually point to an organizational issue that from an IT infrastructure perspective, technology is a challenge and maybe I need to improve my, my uh, infrastructure challenges or the actual equipment that I'm providing. Really it's giving you a lot of really robust information to help you make decisions better. The charts all have the ability to be exported, so you can export them to incorporate them into a PowerPoint presentation that you might have. Or the ability to export them as a PDF, print them off, do whatever you need to do. Now, these dashboards are updated within an hour, so that's a great benefit. Um, you know, one of the challenges, especially as you start to delve into data like this, by the harvest all the data, um, go through and manipulate it, get it into the charts and graphs that you need for your pleasing team that's already outdated. This allows you to jump into the system right before your meeting, grab what you need, and then go. And so we talk a lot about is on-the-job training. Adding on the job training, one of the challenges that we have is that there's a lot of training that's con 
conducted, and it's hard to keep track of where everybody's at. Eight, if you have a large workforce who enters the workforce all at the same time, but that rarely ever happens. What this allows you to see is it allows you to track a large amount of training across a team. So if you're looking at a five-month program, and you see across that five-month program where everybody is from a completion standpoint. So you could tell and make decisions that if I need somebody who's, who's fully trained in this impact, I need to look and say, okay, this individual right here is 94 percent complete. They just need this cart loading manipulator training. Let me get them trained so that I can get them up and running and they can start being a part of this work team. The whole purpose here is giving you a lot of robust information to make sure that you can make decisions in a really rapid time frame. So just open up one more dashboard. It always has to be about training. So all too often we're sending documents we have administrators who's maybe cataloging those documents, record those have been returned. You can use GPL or Plus to be able to track any kind of an agreement that you might send out. Here, the ability to see how many agreements have been completed, how incomplete, and what would happen in an organization is we would send the last email that everybody needs to complete this as a reminder. What we're really able to do here is now target specific departments. So the ability to see which departments are lagging, so we can see that general management is still 20% a lot higher. We can just target those specific departments to make sure we're getting the response that we need. This is just an example of some executive dashboards that we do have available. And I'm going to talk to the PowerPoint. Contact information, um, you probably also have a point of contact uh, within our business development team or our services and support team. Uh, please feel free to contact any of them if you're interested. But at this point, I'll turn it back to our moderator. If you do have any questions, please feel free to put those into the chat panel and we'll make sure that we get answers to you. Cool. That was great. Um, we did have a few questions come in. Sharon, uh, one one of them is, will running reports become a little less complicated? I absolutely will. So when we run reports, if you've used the system before, right now the system is a little bit challenging from a date perspective. You know, when you go to run a report, you actually have to enter the date in a certain sense. One of the enhancements that our administrators are super stoked about is the fact that you now have a calendar picker that you can choose your date from. Uh, the wizard is super easy. It walks you through step by step what report you want to want to select, what attributes you want to choose. You then your calendar picker to choose your dates, and you're off and running. So there's really no remembering how to do it. There's no upskilling required. Um, you know, I can tell you, I learned it in about five or less. Great question coming in, Sherry. Um, can employees be assigned tasks as a group? Or can they be assigned individually? There is both. Um, one of the features that we do have also is a, what's called a dynamic user group. So you in the system is you actually take your users and you assign different characteristics to them. So be location, maybe shift, uh, maybe you use the piece of equipment that they might be operating. Um, you put language preferences. You have these characteristics to your list, and then you can use dynamic learner group. What that does is anytime you put a new piece of training in there, you can select what user groups you want to sign into. It's going to automatically assign that training to all of the users in that group. Now, some of the benefits that you get from that is, let's say you have an individual who, again, moved from control, control room operator one to control room operator two. As you change that attribute for that learner and put them into that new role, unenrolls them in all the previous learning that they needed to take while still keeping that record, and enrolls in all of the new training that they need to take. And if there was any overlap, it still marks those as complete because it's part of their learning history. The ability to batch select users if you want to do that manually or invite individual users in as well. So there's a little flexibility, but that dynamic user group is definitely a huge time saver. Great. Is there any more questions? Thank you.
We have a question. Um, and someone missed something at the beginning of the webinar about um, the event in New Orleans. So we're going to host a GP Island Plus Users Conference March 7th through 9th in New Orleans, and a great chance to to go out and, and and for customer presentations and valuable training sessions. Um, there we to see and to get specific product training on GP Island Plus. This is a new product that we have to offer, but it's a great chance for great network opportunities, and there will be tons of demonstrations, and you can see how your industry peers have applied GP Island Plus throughout their organization as well. So great opportunity. You will see more communications about this as we move toward March. Um, that is it on the questions, Sherry. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? I uh, not other than to say thank you to everyone for joining us. Um, happy that you were able to take 30 minutes out of your day to learn about this. And again, if you want a deeper dive, you want to look at the administrative side, please just give us a call. Um, and we'd be more than happy to to set up a, another WebEx for you to give you more specific tailored information to your organization. All right, Sherry. And, uh, for the call, thank you for joining us and have a nice day. We'll send you the slides and recording of this webinar uh, sometime next week.